here's a video that you need to bookmark because I'm going to tell you by the time you are done with your certificate and you have your certificate in, in your pocket and you're ready to go fly, you're going to need to refer to this again because this is real life stuff. How do you determine if you need approval? This is one of the answer, the, that, one of the questions that I answer the most on different forums, on Facebook and all over the place because people are very confused about this. As a graduate of this course, I do not want you to be confused. I want you to be able to go out there and explain to people how it actually works. So, in order to fly in controlled airspace, you need to get approval from the FAA. This is just a reminder, we've seen this before. There's two different ways that you can get approval from the FAA. The first one is with a program called LANCE, the Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability. This approval is immediate. This approval is actually fairly new. This, is, this was implemented in 2018. And before that, it was a complete mess. Before that, it would take me, it took me one time up to 11 months to get approval to fly in an airspace. This is instantaneous. You can go on your phone, you can go on your computer, request approval and get it immediately. Lance is amazing. Now, the thing is, not all airports participate in Lance. So in some cases, you're going to have to go to the FAA website, which is called a drone zone, and that approval can take up to 90 days. Now you're going to say, how do I know which one is what? Well, how do I know which airport is in Lens and which one is not? You can go to this thing. You should bookmark this, this uh, page right here. It's called a UAS facility map. The facility map is a grid. It's going to give you a grid around an airport and that is going to tell you how high you can fly around that airport. So it makes it very simple. When you go on that facility map, you can see that there is a grid that's going to be green and a grid that's going to be red. The green grid is going to be Lance approved. They participate in Lance, which means you can go online and submit approval to fly immediately. If the grid is red, then it means they are not part of Lance, which means you need to go to the FAA website and submit on the drone zone and wait up to 90 days. Now, I know it takes less than 90 days now, so you can actually get the approval in, in a couple days, uh, but still you have to plan ahead. So go to that website. There's actually a full video at the end of this course in the, bon in the bonus section where I'm gonna explain to you how the, uh, the map, the facility map works and how you get information. And there's also videos on how to submit approval for Lance and the other drop zone. So very end of the video of, the, of this course, it's in the bon bonus section, there is uh, videos that explain to you how you do this. For airports that are part of Lens, you can submit the request via what's called a Lens provider. There's different Lens providers out there. The one that I use is called Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk is um, a, a mobile app that's available on your phone. And again, there's a video that shows you how to do that. Or you can use the, the, uh, the desktop uh, version, which is via Skyward. Skyward is the company, skyward.io. I have videos showing you both of these, how to submit these requests. Personally, I like Skyward because I can do all my planning ahead of time on the computer, much easier than using a cell phone or using a, a tablet. And, um, and I can get my approval immediately. I can even print them. So I have them available with me when I go on the field. So this is a really good way to do it. Again, if it's participating in Lens. If you want to find a list of who's participating in Lens, the, the different airports, you can go to the facility map that I just showed you, or you can go on this link right here, which is going to show you the full list of all the different airports. Like I've said before, if you want to go fly in Class D airspace for tomorrow for a job that you have for a real estate agent, maybe, you can just go in Lens, get instant approval, as long as you're flying below the grid altitude. When you click on the facility map, it's going to show you a grid and then each of these grids are going to have numbers on them. 400 feet, 250 feet, 300 feet, sometimes zero. And that means that you just can't fly in that area. As you get closer to the airport, then those areas are going to be restricted. Now, I like what the FAA did. They basically gave us blocks of airspace with different altitude that we can fly at and we can just request to fly in that airspace. It's very much like what you do when you're a man pilot where you say, I want to enter class D airspace to go and land. Then you get approval to do it. This is the same thing. If you want to fly higher than the grid, let's say that you have a job where you need to fly at 400 feet and the grid only says 250 feet, you can actually request to fly above the grid in one of those lens provider, Kitty Hawk or Skyward. And uh, 
and it's gonna have to go to the FAA for approval. So that's gonna take a few more days. It's been taking about two or three days for me to get approval when I fly in these. So make sure that you plan ahead of time. Don't do it like 10 minutes before your flight or don't do it even a day before your flight. You have to plan in advance. Again, go to the bonus video section. I have videos in there that show you how to submit a lens approval using Kitty Hawk and using Skyward, two different methods. And it's just a really good way to get your approval immediately. On the other side of the equation is if your airport is not participating in LANS, then you need to get approval from the FAA Drone Zone website. This is gonna take a little bit longer, up to 90 days is what the FAA says, but I've seen them granted for a shorter period of time. Now the advantage of getting this from the Drone Zone is usually the approval is for an extended period of time. When you request in LANS, you usually get approval for a short period of time, one hour, two hours, whatever your mission is. But in this case, if you have an extended period of time and you can get it for a year or several months, that's what the FAA has been granted approval for. Now this is going to cover the entire grid, depending on how you submit it, but I show you how to submit it at the end of the course uh, using, the, um, using a, a wide area, so you can get a wide area authorization. And then as long as you remain below the grid altitude, then you that's all you need. You just need your approval from the drone zone and then you don't have to submit any other approval. Now again, head out to the bonus section and see uh, the videos that are in there. Uh, I have a whole bunch of different things to show you how to submit airspace approval.